We're told that the allegations of child sex abuse or the sex trafficking of children among political circles in politics and entertainment. We're told this is all groundless, nothing to see here. Don't even talk about it. But we should ask in return, what about Jeffrey Epstein? Let's see, the convicted child sex offender who is shuttling global elites in politics, entertainment, and finance on his private airplane to his private island. Jeffrey Epstein allegedly killed himself in prison. Now, his closest associate, Jelaine Maxwell, she was sentenced to 20 years in prison last June, get it, for sex trafficking of minors. Now, it's an odd situation in many ways because the list of clients and details of cases are still not being shown to the public. And people around the case keep turning up dead from alleged suicides, including shooting themselves with no gun apparently there. And the corporate media keeps telling us that any talk about these things is just plain old conspiracy. Well, regardless, Jeffrey Epstein keep, keeps on hitting the headlines. The now deceased billionaire hedge fund manager with debatable sources of income owned two islands in the Caribbean. And you might have seen the one with the infamous temple-like blue and white striped structure on it, fixated with a golden dome and golden bird statues. And we're told that's totally normal, apparently. Now, after Epstein's death, his two islands went up for sale for $125 million. Both islands were just sold, and they were sold for less than half that price at $60 million. Folks, the islands are Great St. James and Little St. James, the latter of which, interestingly, was previously listed as a snorkel stop for the Disney Cruise Line. Uh, Disney, by the way, claims it had no connection to the island itself. It claims the island was just included in the cruise line description to, quote, identify areas where snorkeling would be available. But back to the point, who, brought, who bought Jeffrey Epstein's islands? Well, that's Stephen Dekoff. He's the founder of private equity firm Black Diamond Capital Management, which last year reportedly managed $10 billion in assets. Dekoff himself is a net worth of $3 billion. He has new plans for Jeffrey Epstein's islands as well. Dekoff allegedly plans to build a 25-room luxury resort on the property, and he also claims notably that he never visited the island until after Epstein died in 2019. He told Forbes this, he said, quote, I've been proud to call the U.S. Virgin Islands home for more than a decade, and I'm tremendously pleased to be able to bring the area a world-class destination, benefiting its natural grace and beauty. Meanwhile, back on Jeffrey Epstein himself, people are still wondering an important question. If he was really a prominent child sex trafficker working with the global elite, who were his clients? How do you have people get found guilty in prison? How do you have someone sex trafficking children and they get charged, they're guilty for it, they go to prison, but you're not told who they were selling the kids to? Well, we're still not being told that. But his black book of contacts is public, as are the flight logs and who traveled on his private jet. The Wall Street Journal also has something new. Wall Street Journal released two reports. They revealed details on this, including some of the names on his calendar. It notes in particular these include people he met with after he served jail time in 2008 for a sex crime with a minor. Remember how that ended, by the way? Jeffrey Epstein in 2008 for a sex crime with a minor, all he had to do was register as a sex offender, and then he served 13 months, not in prison, but in a work release program. It was a slap on the wrist, in other words. The new reports note that Epstein had three meetings for these new documents. With who? William Burns, the director of the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. He got his CIA position under Biden in 2021, and he met three times with Epstein back in 2014. There was also the former White House counsel under President Barack Obama, that's Catherine Rumler, also allegedly had dozens of meetings with Jeffrey Epstein. Wall Street Journal notes these meetings were after she left the White House, notably, and became a top lawyer at Goldman Sachs Group in 2020. It says that Epstein introduced her to some potential legal clients, including former Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates. Another individual he met with was Noam Chomsky, 
professor and political activist who was scheduled to fly with Epstein and then have dinner at his Manhattan townhouse in 2015. When asked by the Wall Street Journal about this, Chomsky said in an email, quote, first response is that it's none of your business or anyone's. Second is that I knew him and we met occasionally. Now there's also Leon Botstein, the president of Bard College, who invited Epstein to the campus. It says this as well. Wall Street Journal notes that Epstein brought a group of young female guests along with him. Not only that, but Botstein had about two dozen meetings scheduled with Epstein. Interestingly, none of these names were in Epstein's black book or in the flight logs. And in a follow-up article from Wall Street Journal also describes Epstein's meetings with other people, including filmmaker Woody Allen and with Lawrence Summers, that's the former director of the National Economic Council under Barack Obama. Meanwhile, there's also a possibility that others tied to Epstein could face criminal charges. A federal judge with the Southern District of New York recently determined in March that banks can now be sued for profiting from Epstein's sex trafficking. This includes, interestingly, Deutsche Bank, which is accused of knowing that Epstein was running a sexual abuse network with underage girls, yet allowed his crimes to continue. And J.P. Morgan Chase is also facing a lawsuit with the same accusation. And another lawsuit filed by the government of the U.S. Virgin Islands, it also alleges that J.P. Morgan turned a blind eye to Epstein's sex trafficking operation. That court filing alleges that J.P. Morgan executives knew about what was happening. Remember that case? We discussed that before. The district attorney who brought those charges was fired by the Virgin Islands governor, Albert Bryan, shortly after the lawsuit was filed in late December. Uh, that was, I'm sure, no coincidence at the same time that Biden and his family were also visiting the Virgin Islands. Now, it seems like long after his death, there are still many questions left to be answered with Jeffrey Epstein.